The Adam Thielen story is one of the absolute best in the NFL. He was an undrafted wide receiver at a Minnesota State before paying his way to attend a regional tryout in which he performed well enough just to get noticed by two NFL teams. After signing with the Vikings, he avoided cuts and slowly became a star contributor for this team. Last offseason, he signed a three-year extension worth up to $27 million. A lot of that has to do with his excellent route running. When most people think of great route runners, they instantly think of guys like Antonio Brown, DeAndre Hopkins, or a guy like Doug Baldwin. Being fast or being strong or having the ability to bring down this contested 50-50 catches is something that is typically innate in wide receiver. However, being a great route runner requires hard work and dedication. It requires you to understand how to stem your routes, how to adjust your body based on leverage, and it also requires you to master the footwork to waste as few steps as possible to get open. When I started this breakdown, I came fully into this thinking that I was only going to talk about Adam Thielen's route running. As I tracked over 200 snaps from the season, what honestly impressed me the most was his ability to adjust, track, and catch the off-schedule throws by his quarterback. There's no doubt in my mind that he's an excellent route runner, but it's this ability that makes him a top 10 receiver. Versus the Rams in Week 11, Thielen ran a beautiful fade route in the third quarter. The cornerback is playing off-man coverage, and he bites hard on Thielen's release. He stems his route inside like he was going to run a crossing route. However, this flapped with the defender and allowed him to streak pass for a 25-yard gain. If the quarterback just threw this ball more accurately, this easily could have been a bigger play. While I didn't notice many releases that were this dynamic, his traditional stem and break in his routes is really what allows him to create separation. This can be seen on any deep over concept, especially while he's lining up in the slot. In this play, the Saints are playing zone coverage, which gives him a one-on-one -on -one versus the middle linebacker. He completely turned him in space as he worked across the field. Watch as Thielen stems his route up the field in order to get the linebacker to flip his hips, and then he cuts across him to get open. On another deep over in Week 6 versus the Packers, he gained 23 yards. He took an inside release, which gets the cornerback and trail technique on his back. He then stems his route vertically to create a false sense of comfort before sharply cutting behind the defense. He gains instant separation on his first step, and then he uses his outside hand to clear the path away from the defender. It's at this point where he knows he has the cornerback beat, so he accelerates and then pulls in the ball before getting out of bounds. Outside of the deep over route in this offense, my other favorite route that he runs is the corner. From a bunch set on the right, he stutter steps and then sharply breaks to the sideline. Since the defense is man coverage and the responsible defender has inside leverage, this is what opens the throwing lane for this pass. Now, the bunch set is actually a very good formation to run this route, and the Vikings use it multiple times in their win over the Saints. While the first example was a man coverage, the Saints try to use a zone look on this play. Rookie Marshawn Lattimore is responsible for the outside zone, but since this was his first NFL game, they were able to take advantage of his inexperience. In the Vikings offense, Thielen ran the corner route 11 of his first 96 targets. He was able to bring in six of those for 153 yards. The five incompletions came when the quarterback overthrew the pass where the ball was simply not catchable. On this throw versus the Redskins, Bashad Breland thinks he's going to run a deep over in order to cross the field. Thielen knows that if he stems his route like a deep over, the left sideline will be completely uncovered based on this coverage. This was a very good play call where they used the Redskins' tendencies against them. In this play, Breland collapsed on the over route, so Thielen was able to drop his hips and cut back across the field on double move. This completely torched him and gave the Vikings a huge play down the field. After reading some comments from this game, many people believe that his 166-yard performance was all versus Josh Norman. I am here to tell you that after tracking all of his plays, Norman only allowed three catches for 15 yards. Now, he did burn Bashad Breland and D'Angelo Hall, but Norman was not responsible for Thielen's huge game. In one of my previous videos, I explained that the Redskins' defense plays sides. Norman, in this coverage, almost exclusively lines up on the offense's right. He rarely ever goes into the slot. Thielen, on the other hand, plays in the slot roughly half of his snaps. This means that Thielen only lined up against Josh Norman on roughly 20 snaps during this game. On Thielen's biggest play of the game in which he gained 49 yards, it was a clear busted coverage by the defense. What happened was the Redskins were playing cover four and the safety cut the backside dig route. Without knowing the exact play call, 
Josh Norman could have been responsible for replacing his zone over the top of the defense. However, based on Yost playing the rest of this coverage, it makes me believe there was a simple miscommunication between these two players. Regardless, Thielen did a fantastic job of working down the field and then he tracked the ball well in order to make this catch. Speaking of adjustments, these can be seen in pretty much every single game during the season. On the stick route, the ball is thrown low across the middle of the field. Thielen uses his entire body to roll through the catch and secure the ball. Through the first 11 weeks, he's only had three drop passes. Considering how frequently he's had to make adjustments, a drop rate of 4.5% is seriously awesome. In general, Thielen is incredible versus off-man coverage. He understands how to stem his routes in order to create hesitation down the field. Versus the Bucks in Week 3, he ran this fade route perfectly attacking the center of the cornerback. This widened him and allowed Thielen to burst past him outside. He then uses his inside hand to fight off contact and then he tracked the ball over his shoulder all while being tackled to the ground. The way he runs this stem is seriously a textbook example of how to attack this coverage. Now, versus press coverage, he doesn't have the same prowess though. He's not bad or anything like that, I just think he's only average and it's something he'll need to refine as he gets better as a wide receiver. Versus the Bears, and please excuse his terrible camera angle, Thielen ran a fade route versus press coverage. While he fights off the cornerback's jab, the initial contact is enough to slow him down his route. This gives the cornerback ample time to recover and shield him out of the play. A few weeks later against the Ravens, Thielen ran a slant route versus press coverage. He takes a hard step outside and then uses his inside arm in order to control his momentum. On this route though, he takes too many steps before his break. In the NFL, a slant route is a three-step route and he takes five steps in this release. At this point in the play, I was seriously worried it was going to be intercepted. However, Thielen did a fantastic job of fighting towards the ball and extending fully in order to bring this pass. Even when his break wasn't ideal, he still brings value to this team. One thing to note, and I said this before, but Thielen plays in the slot roughly 50% of his snaps. In this alignment, he doesn't have to face press coverage. This is good to know because he'll be able to consistently produce against off-man and zone coverage. While I think he's a good downfield route runner, one of my negatives is that he's not that elusive as a ball carrier. He's been given his chances, but right now he's currently only averaging a broken tackle on 5% of his touches. This puts him in the bottom 10 for this category. In this play, the Vikings call a drag route in order to get him the ball underneath. Their goal is to have him gain yards after the catch, but he's tackled by the first defender. This happens quite frequently as he's much better in space versus directly overpowering another player. Now, there have been times during the season where he's broken a tackle, but he's simply not Antonio Brown or Golden Tate type of player. Moving on, what's kind of interesting is the Vikings even motion him inside and use him as a tight end as well. This level of versatility as a blocker and his understanding of this offense clearly gives him the edge. In my opinion, this is a large reason for his success and a big reason why he's a top 10 receiver in the NFL. At the end of my Des Bryant video, I showed this slide listing my top wide receivers. This slide became the obvious focal point of many of the comments. For clarification, this list is based on talent in both current and future production. Larry Fitzgerald, who is an amazing wide receiver, is unfortunately at the end of his career. If I was to take a new wide receiver for my team, I would obviously love to have him, but you just can't guarantee he'll be around much longer. The other big point I'm going to make is that between numbers 4 through 7, or AJ Green, Mike Evans, Doug Baldwin, and DeAndre Hopkins, there is very little difference in my mind. All these guys are top tier players, and I would kill to have any of them on my team. So here is an update of the same list, and for this video, I expanded to show my top 20 receivers. Again, I fully expect people to disagree with me, but this is the order I'd personally pick these players. Well, thank you so much for watching. Our good friends at BetDSI.com will offer a free $25 wager to any viewer of this channel. If you use promotion code BREAK25, you can get a free bet on your next game. If you are a casual gambler or simply want to make these games more fun, this can be your chance to do this. Again, this bet is completely risk-free as long as you use promotion code BREAK25 when you sign up. Now, if you enjoyed this breakdown, go ahead and click the link to my Patreon account. Any amount you donate is greatly appreciated. I mentioned this during my Des Bryant video, but that one was personally selected by a member of the gold tier, so if you want me to explore a topic of your choosing, 
go ahead and click the link and follow the instructions on the screen. Thank you again for watching, and as always, you can follow me on Twitter at Samuel or Gold.